Hi everyone, welcome back. We're on rose number nine today, okay? So, uh, like I said before, here's the colors that I'm using, the same kind of colors. If you wanna know how I do the board and the prep of the board, go back to video number one. This is just a light gray onto a masonite panel. I use these masonite panels. You can get it really cheap, at, not cheap, inexpensive. At uh, I get it at the local Home Depot. Four by eight sheet of it costs about less than 10 bucks and you cut it up you get like 50 boards something like that to play with but we'll use this for a while this size for a few more videos and then we'll uh, change up go a little larger do some larger compositions I have my colors out here my Hansa yellow yellow oxide burnt sienna uh, naphthol red light pine green thalo blue red violet black and white so it's the six color set really plus a little yellow oxide burnt sienna and the uh, um, pine green now, I, I like this color, but you know, one of my favorite colors to bounce everything off of is the nice warm burnt sienna. And I'm gonna put a little extender with that right here. And I love a powerful, look at that, bang. That is like contrast and a half. I used to just, oh man, that would just rattle my teeth and stuff to do something like this. But today, I love a powerful, I don't know what it is, it's about my morning walks out and looking at those of you that follow me on Facebook, you know, I post these beautiful photos of walking in the morning and these brilliant, uh, brilliant uh, sunrises and stuff that I, that I post. It's just amazing. Now, let's take and we'll push through that just a bit, soften out the edges. I'm going to leave some of that powerful streaky color right into the center. Let's come back out over on this side. So I want that that powerful boom right through the center there. That'll help pull, but a few streaks like that, isn't that nice? Isn't that a little different of a background here? If you wanna soften it out, you can put something out over here. Sometimes, you know, you know, using like a, a touch of the, of a medium white like that into the color and soften it, it is pretty. Sometimes I'll pull across, there's a little difference. Today, I'm just gonna leave that one like that because it's a, a bit different. Now, we'll go drop this three quarter inch brush into the uh, the water here and um, grab one of our favorite number eight painting brushes. And I want to do, um, I've done a lot of these color roses and stuff. I think I want to do one a little bit. Let's start it out actually with the medium white. So this is the white that I used there in rose number eight um, to put out some medium white and I use that into the background. I'll use this now as the base for, and I wish that would dry. I wish I hadn't added extender. I wish that would dry up a little bit because it's going to go more orange here. I'll use that as the base here, though, for a white rose here. So we'll just push this down. I like this medium white color here. We'll put this down. thing is, try all different kinds of stuff. You know, this this color is beautiful when you put a streak of blue next to it because they're complement blue and the burnt sienna are complements to it stuff so that actually picks up a little bit of that oh wow look at that background actually picks up a little bit push that into the background we'll get a beautiful color there for our rose here so your rose is mostly a circle i'll push that around a bit and uh do we want to do extra white blossoms or something like that with that? What do we want to do with this one here? We can do a few blossoms, a few yellow ones. Oh, here I got the answer right here. Let's do little blue blossoms because that's a compliment to the background, right? Let's add a little burnt sienna to that to tone it down just a bit. And let's toss a little bit of blue into our painting here as having some blossoms there. We'll toss a little darker blue gray right up here, maybe work that through. That'd be pretty as little ones. You can do these as little blossoms. You know, I've done some of the bigger blossoms so far. We could do some smaller ones here just to push some of that around. Let's just push some of that around. Blue, burnt sienna, little white, vary the color, vary the tone a bit. And let's just push that around a bit here. Before it dries, just push that around, get some of that color going there. That'll be pretty. And that's different. Also, we'll do one rose and a bunch of blue blossoms here. 
Let's take some of our green and let's establish our stem green burnt sienna. Establish that stem. Let's put that green into the blue here with some burnt sienna. Nice dark, a little bit of that cool it, nice burnt, a little bit of that red violet in there to cool that. Nice dark here and play that around a bit. Yeah, I love that green and burnt sienna though. Whoa, so that's a pretty color. Pretty tone, pretty color. Push that around, push that right into your rose. That'll give you, you know, I'll be doing more of this later on, but that's really how I create the transparent edges to my roses and stuff, is using those, pushing it into the rose. I actually push it into the rose and uh, create some great, great edges. Pull down just a bit. That's pretty good. And uh, I'm using this extender here mostly just for moisture. I, like I said before in a lot of the other videos, I love how extender makes the color slide. I don't always like how it, because I'm not a blender, I don't always like how it slows it down too much. But you know, I mean, I'm going to be showing you, because some of you are blenders. Some of you just love the blending. So I'll be doing some global roses and stuff later. Show you all the wet techniques, because I was that, for many years, I was that way. Okay, so see, look at the different contrast in that. Boy, look at that here, the difference between that and rose number eight here that we did, uh, <laughs> we did earlier. Look at that. It's quite a bit of difference there. I mean backgrounds and everything just make a difference. Now let's take our cool color. Let's take some red with that. Cool color with this. Let's drop that right into here. Nice, dark, tight little turn. Then lift the pressure, get back on the handle of your brush. Walk it up here. Let the small little curvy motion here. Just paint and let some movement come through. Don't make it smooth. Let the movement come in there to the rose, okay? Get a little more red, a little more red violet. You can put burnt sienna in it. Change the color a little bit. Let's find the bowl. Find that bowl, push that up and around. See, I like this. This is starting to get tacky, sticky. You can hear it. You can hear it there, see? That's where I like it. That's the kind of blender I am today where that just skips and hits. So, and like I said before, if you get something, like I've showed you, if you get something in here and you want to soften that out, but it's all dry, just mist a little bit of water onto your palette. Make sure your finger is kind of clean, okay? And just take a little bit of that onto your finger like this, that water, and see how you can move that really easy? So just take a little water on your finger and you can move that, see? Even though it's kind of dry, you can move that. That's what we call the solvent technique for the painting of it, okay? There's a lot of different techniques I use. And I, I consistently, in, in a lot of the flowers and stuff I paint, use over 30 different techniques, different things that I, that I do. Now, remember before we said sometimes you can draw that up there like that on the edge. I like that because that gives a different kind of movement sometimes. But um, let's take a softer, maybe a little bit of a light orange or something with that and push that bowl just a little higher there like that. All right, so now you can see the rose, right? Hopefully. Let's take some white. Let's start shifting our rose over to the white, and I'm gonna put a little blue in this to just totally change the color here a bit. It'll actually be a little cooler with the warmer color up underneath. This will give you a different silvery look to your rose, but it'll, uh, go so very well with the blossoms that we're going to be adding to here. Let's put a petal to the outside here. Now, there's the bowl, so we got to push it into the bowl and push it in and out. If that does not move for you, let's push that edge in a bit like that. See, I like that. Boom, see how it took that edge? Makes it a nice sheer little edge. If that does not move for you, then take a little water. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm just adding an extender here just so that it... Uh, strokes well here adding the extender I like the slipperiness of the extender let's add a little more light here 
There, boom. See, I like those broken edges like that sometimes. I like that around. Let's add a few, maybe an idea of a little petal or something back here. See, that just, so it's not just always perfect round. You get some different shapes back there. And the rose coming through. So, you know, you have different kinds of roses, have all different kinds of shapes, you know. And, um, yeah. And we'll use some warm color as well here. Push that up and around. Now, this is um, going to, you know, I'm going to walk in this time on the rose here because I'm a little bit off of my center, uh, you know, getting close enough to that center. So I'll just walk in like that. And that gives you a different look as well. Sometimes I start with the lower one and then walk up into the, to get a different look. I try not to set, you know, when I paint, I try not to set too many patterns to this is the way in which I do it because I like to, to change. I like to change. Okay, so now if it starts to feel too cool, too blue, too cool, get your medium white back in there, right in here like this, that'll warm it up. See how that warms that right up, okay? So if it starts to feel too cool or something to you, you can do that to it. Let's pull some out. There's a big dollop of this nice light color pulling out. So sometimes that's a hard thing to get all that pushed in. So I'll assist my color by putting a, a color. Here's my shadow. This is my light. I'll come in halfway between and put that right in there like that. That's called a half tone. Now it's really easy for me to push into both of them and soften and get that look that I want to have there to that particular petal. So. Let's set this one in a little bit different here. But I don't always like to do them round. I like to do, you know, different types of edges and stuff like that with them and stuff. So I like all different kinds of looks. And I try all different kinds of looks because, you know, all of my all of my students and friends and customers, they all like different looks as well. So, and I, so I try all, always try and let's get a little blue. We can even head over towards that violet side slightly onto the cool side here. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, see that violet's kind of pretty heading over there on that side. Now let's use a little light right here. Push some of that violet up onto that side, right around like that. A little different shape of rose. Went around now when you get it uh, you know a little confused that center there now is a little confused let me put some violet in there as well I'll reset it with the dark here in just a minute and that brings it back in shape so I don't ever worry about that because you can always reset anything with your dark I like that little violet there though that bit of that violet in there it's kind of nice here on that side yeah, and now my rose, for the size of the bowl, see this is something I told you early on, I have a tendency to grow, and see how my rose is, is grown to over, a little over half of the width of this board, so I don't like that as much, so I'm going to show you, we're going we're gonna to trim it down a bit, take a little cool color, a little pine green, a little bit of burnt sienna, a little bit of red violet here, and we're going to trim it down just a bit size-wise here reduce some of that down and we'll reset our blues as well but then i'm going to re-trim down the weight of the rose here see just a bit of that a little taking a little bit of shears there to it and trimming a few things down really changes the the feel of the rose there see so if it starts to just getting a little bit wild and crazy for you trim is probably in it where you feel kind of inside the, yeah, it's getting difficult to manage it's probably the size so trim it down a bit and uh, let's get back into our uh, cool colors here let's set in some some additional cools in there that's kind of pretty and uh, then let's get our medium whites to our whites here and build up the front of our rose 
real fast. Don't want to play. This is where I want to start moving. Don't want to play. Around like that. Set some of that shape and size. I just want the movement down over there. Let's bring these back in. Here. I like that little green there. I'm going to leave that. Bring that back in. Try not to go out too far. We set a little bit of that violet into the cool bowl there. That's kind of pretty. A little different. Let's set a lighter stroke. Right there like that. Pull that bowl down into that just a little bit. So that's a nice reaching petal. Let's set some of that right out here like this as well. Another nice little reaching petal. Set to pull some of the warm out. You can set a half tone in there. Push in and out a bit. There like that. Get that nice color. Let's take just an edge of this. You can see. See, I love the rose when I start painting with some speed. Because then I it doesn't get stiff because I don't play. You know, I'm... Some of you write to me and you say, yeah, well, I, I can't stop the playing of it. Yeah, I know. I was that way for a long time. And what is it that changed me? Speed. Learning to paint them faster. And painting them more acrylic and, and not quite as wet. So I had to paint them faster. That's what I did, you know. So, and so many people write to me and they say, well, you know, I want to... Paint your roses, dries too fast, dries too fast. Well, I'm, my answer to that is paint faster, but they don't want to hear that. They want to hear how do you make your paints, you know, dry slower, which you can, you know, more extender and stuff. You, know, you can, but make your paints dry slower and slower. And uh, that's not the answer because you're making stiff little roses too. The answer to making pretty roses is paint them as quickly as and as casually as possible. Maybe these little pettit lights. I like that little pettit marks. And we talked about that, so. Gets a little different shape to the rose there. Let's take some of this cool color and we shape a bit of our bowl here. Push that in and around. Up like that. I just like those. See that color coming through. I like that. There, that's kind of pretty. Let's put just a little bit more light right out here. And you know, a little half tone pull out. Another little half tone pull out. That's pretty. See, it's got some power right to that petal. Now let's take a little dark red, a little red here. A little bit of our red violet and a little red. Let's reset that uh, center here. Pull out a bit. We set the depth of this center here, just like that. That looks nice. A little difference to the rose. Let's set a nice little cool kind of petals coming out and around. Just the feeling of it coming out and around here. See, it just opens up that rose a bit like that. A little different look to it, very different look to it than some of the other ones. Okay, that's good. Now I don't want to, I want to leave that, that nice movement in there. Now let's get back into our blues. Since we used some violets in that, let's put a little violet in that as well. Here. Let's, let's set some more blues and violets. Maybe a little lighter. Right back up in here. Get some of those colors in. See, it's all pretty color. Get those colors in there. Let's get to... Uh, a little lighter towards our violets here. Let's set some pretty smaller, lighter colors. Ideas, just boom, boom, boom. Change, you know, work through like red violets here to blue violets, like this. Tap through like that here. Change the color a little more blue. You don't need to paint the whole thing, just kind of paint the idea of it there. And um, when you get some of those blues, remember I did this on an earlier rose, and you get a little bit of that blue, touch a little bit of that into the 
the uh, the rose there as well. It's nice to have that crossing over of color. Let's push some of this right in here. Some different shaped little blossoms. Push them around. Let the shapes not be perfect. You know, just, and that's a hard thing. Boy, it was a hard thing for me for a long time just to let some of those shapes not be quite so perfect. You know, you don't have to, you just have to paint the impression of petals. You don't have to uh, paint perfect petals, you know, just uh, just the impressions of those. Now we'll come back with a lightning, some lighter ones. And remember the rose controls everything here, so not everything is super light here. So, well, uh, nothing lighter than the rose. We'll put some more light up onto this one. Let's put a little more light right up here onto this one. Some of those light colors, differences coming through there. And I'll have some nice room here for uh, some uh, leaves to go in and around those. That's a rose as well. There, that's kind of pretty. A little, um, I just love to paint these, and I, I think it, you know, it is the art of creating them is what I really love more than anything else. I mean, you know, my favorite color is, is gray, so I, I mean, it's this, I hardly ever paint, you know, too much with that, but, uh, it, it is, um, my favorite, and, uh, so I tend to, uh, I tend to like toned colors, but this definitely isn't toned. Let's take a little yellow oxide, a little pine green, and uh, we'll create a lighter leaf here, just like that. We'll create some light leaves coming off of these other colors here. And I like that yellow oxide, sometimes a little burnt sienna into that. Pretty, that's nice warm greens here. That'll play real nice against the cool colors here of the uh, the blues and stuff here. Let's take some of this and just touch a little bit of that around. Boom, get painting. Move it, move it, move it. Don't play with them. Just move, move, move. Let's get a little lighter. Okay, a little lighter, a little more yellow here. Get a bit of that light color coming into these leaves here. Remember that that's what makes pretty compositions is your leaves change, just like your your other flowers and stuff change. Your leaves change. Here, put a few of that green around. Take that light. Let's push a little vein line in. Something about these that little vein lines just add so much here. Little vein lines, softer little vein lines back here. There, like that. The centers of these, I like that violet coming off of there. So let's take some red violet. Let's touch a little red violet into the centers of these. Look at how pretty that is with the blue. There, touch a little bit of that. Before we did the yellow oxide onto the brush, pick up a corner of Hansa Yellow, start on the light side, tap in there and then soften. Sometimes I turn the brush over like I just did to put the yellow oxide side there. Sometimes I'll tap it. If I feel it's a little too bright, I'll tap it with my finger here. So we'll put a little bit of that. I like that little spark of yellow in there though. That's kind of pretty. A little bit of yellow. Turn the brush over to that yellow oxide side. Put in just a soft little center there, like that. And that is really all you need to do. Now, the only thing that I need is what it, this rose has collapsed a little bit on this side. Part of that is because I lost my bowl. And I saw that happening and I'm just gonna let it happen. And uh, I'll come back here, take some um, violet colors and I'm gonna, I'm just, even though I like that petal, 
I'm going to reshape some of my dark right out here on my bowl and bring that right back in like that and bring the darkness back into the bowl here on this side, shadow side. And see how that dramatically changes this rose here. Pull some of that out. That, uh, that really changes the feeling of this side of the rose here because it, it reshapes that bowl and gets the shadow back there where it should be. Let's put just a little bit of the soft light here. Right like that. And that's kind of pretty. You could put some of that blue in there and stuff like that if you want. But that uh, creates a nice little boy. 25 minutes. <laughs> Isn't that wild? Isn't it? Um, I could get these blossoms just a little bit lighter. I do. Uh, but boy, I like those colors and how it sets up along that. If you take a darker frame like this frame that I have here. See, that'll look into a dark frame. Boy. That would look pretty nice into a, a dark frame like that. Or a frame that has a little bit of the, the burnt sienna or something like that into it too. Would be really pretty. I could lighten up. Just take a little bit more white right here with some of this blue. And uh, lighten up the front edges of some of these. Right up by the... by And just let some of that tapping, some of those pettit. I always call them pettit marks. Eugene Pettit. Pettit marks right here makes a nice pretty little blossom there nice light let those blossoms change colors take a bit of that red violet with that just whisper a bit of that into the into that blossom that gives you an extra little color look at how pretty that is with that extra little color into that blossom you know some of that red violet so it's not just blue you pick up some of that as well that violet see that's pretty it moves those colors through add some of that out and around and uh, get that nice dark some of that stem stem line and stuff moving through some of that marks and that works really nice and you have another one this was uh, rose number what let's say nine I mean, rose nine. So we got it. Got that one. That rose nine. A little different yet. <laughs> kind of fun, all right? Okay, rose nine. So next one is rose 10. We'll do something a little different. I'll see you on rose 10.